This is a very quick follow-up to um, the FT767GX. <laughs> I thought I said it, called it a 736 on the last video, but I don't think I did in the end. I, I quickly reviewed it and went, oh, anyway, you'll see the YouTube thing that says on the description, I think I, told it, I called it something else. Anyway, okay, so we've got the module back in. We've um, looked for dry joints. We've cleaned all the rubbish off it, and basically um, we have got absolutely... Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was hoping it would be more than that. But what we do have, we do have some learning, uh, which if I pull leads out the way here. Oh, God. We're going well here. Righto. Okay, so let's just um, turn that down a bit. What we're looking for, though, is everything kind of doing what it should, mixes, etc., and it is. And the reason we know that is because we can take our analyzer on 51 megs, and we're sitting at 51 megs here on the display. And we quite clearly can hear ourselves coming through. One, two, one, two. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Now, what we're looking for here is what's happening. Um, and, and pretty much we're, we're where we need to be. And um, But there's, there's definitely a lot of sound in the back of this that, um, if I turn my scorch up, would help a bit, um, would um, uh, tell me that the uh, we, we, all we're hearing is maybe some pre-drive there. Uh, pre-drive or driver um, tops uh, with these modules generally it'll be the, yeah it'll be that module that's where the dead end is now if, if I had an extender board um, I could remote that unit from the back of that and uh, and and basically then you know test it run my uh, sniffer along it with my crow just sniff it out and do likewise that you do with the, any internal radio so let's just turn that one off for a minute um, as a practice um, pull your 240 volts out to, even though you're only just removing a, a temporary module um, and um, and this was a very very quick test that we did on this uh, we weren't expecting to get much at all I didn't even bother screwing the thing down to be honest because I, I was just going to hit it once and say any RF and if there was any signs of any RF great and if there wasn't but as you can see we've, we've had to clean up the board and get a bit of rubbish off it um, we tried to clean up around this component here but um, that'll that well I shouldn't say that will be, but I would say that will be our component problem. Um, so um, I'm appealing to everybody, <laughs> start Googling or something. Right, we need an M57735. Um, that's my punt. I'm going to pull this one out. And I, um, by the way, we did resold it uh, down here uh, along all of them, just in case, you know, the moisture got caused a dry joint on here, etc., etc. But, you know, I'm just not that lucky. Uh, I wish. Anyway, so we're on the lookout for an M57735 and um, there's probably not likely to be a substitute as such. Um, uh, maybe something that's close. Um, when I say close, um, generally, uh, you know, they, they were fairly specific, these modules. Um, uh, the only good news is the pinouts didn't change too much, so that might be, you know, a blessing. We'll see. Anyway, um, We'll start Googling ourselves and getting onto a few companies, see if we can get a part for this. If not, what do we do? Well, we take up all this space here. We take the pre-drive um, and <clears throat> probably just add a little driver circuit and we put something else in there uh, that's going to work at six metres and it won't need to be a module that big, to be honest. Um, we've got a lot of space to play with. So that would be the next sort of way that you'd deal with this. But anyway, um, this is sort of the part two just really proving I suppose yes my belief would be uh, that that module is uh, certainly in a lot of trouble one of the things we will do um, actually right now a lot of the times we talk about uh, proof of concept and these types of things um, so what we've got is one M57735 um, out and look at that didn't rip off one of the leads unbelievable uh, number of times I've done these and normally you know you'll break one of these um, they're a pig to get out, to be honest, especially on these little modules. So, okay, what the point of this is, is to say, well, does anything change? And it won't. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So we can still see we've got the same amount of signal there that we had before. Nothing's changed. So there's a pre-drive there. We can always still hear that sort of little bit of something going on in the background. And, and actually hear how that's getting worse as I hold that down, because it's, it's not... Um, not in the same condition it was before. We've we've changed the parameters a bit. One two one two one two one two. So basically, um, we know that this is dead. There's 
Um, no way of us actually proving there's pre-drive there to you know, off the board because we, we just can't sniff into an area where there's just no access um, and there literally uh, is very little access. There is a way you could do it um, and you could actually lift this up and have this sitting uh, on like a 45 degree angle and you may be able to just get in there and get to a couple of bits and pieces and sniff out a couple of things. But in this particular case, no, I don't need to. I, I pretty much know. I had a, a quick look at um, just what they were doing there. And yes, this device here, it's, it's a fairly, fairly low level input actually um, to produce this 10 watts. So uh, it is dead. And go, judging by what you saw earlier, there's a good reason for why it's dead. It, it suffered massive moisture. Uh, it was very dry on the back here as well because the moisture, as you can see, wasn't much of that left. Uh, my fingers should be covered in that stuff, not just a little bit of white, but covered in it. By the way, you get the stuff on your fingers. Um, uh, heat sinking compound is not your friend. Wash your hands uh, before you eat, before you touch anything, before you drink. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, this, this has had a really hard life. There wasn't, even though you know, there was a couple of screws holding this down, um, there was no heat sinking compound left on it. There was virtually just corrosion in between it. And um, actually, if I just pull the module out, this area here should have been flooded in um, uh, heat sinking compound. These these units really do need good um, conductivity between the heat sink and um, uh, of the heat sink of the actual unit as such. And uh, oh, that was a good shot. Sorry. Um, yeah. So when they go in, we pour loads and loads of heat sinking compound below, and we pull them virtually pull them down together to marry together. And um, uh, but you know now this is not too difficult once you've got them out um, they're, they're plated through holes So they are a little bit difficult to get sort of out generally, but you know, we'll go and clean up those um, um, Five uh, holes so that they're very nice and once you've got a new component um, because these legs are so long uh, and uh, um, A lot of people actually leave them in a little bit long believe it or not just in case they've got to pull them um, Because they're a pain to put back in when they're short <coughs> Excuse me and you do need a bit of length to be able to uh, bend around uh, because, of course, this sits on a, um, a right angle, so it's got to come around and down that distance between the heat sink and the bottom. There's quite actually a, uh, a reasonable uh, amount of drop there. Okay, so um, once again, we're after an M577735. So if anybody uh, sort of finds one on there, uh, you know, like their radio desk somewhere and thinks, what's that? Send it to us. We'll buy it. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to have to check, track one of those down. Okay, that'll be part two of the uh, FT767 uh, GX 6 meter uh, repair. And um, we know what it is. Just a matter of getting the part. 73s, VK3, Charlie Mike. Cheers.